From the edge of Music City on the air and over the web, this is Music City Roots, live from the Lumbus Cafe. Hi everybody, I'm Keith Bilbrey, welcoming you to our weekly radio showcase for the finest roots in Americana music from and passing through Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks for being with us here in the barn and out there over live radio and on the web. Give yourselves a big round of applause, yeah! We're proud to be going out live over Nashville's hippest new radio station, Hippie Radio 94.5. Thanks also to the Loveless Cafe for the legendary biscuits and chicken. Oh, they were so good. And the buffet for our musicians, supporters, and crew. Thanks to our sponsors, including Blackstone Beer, who brings you our lineup of artists each week. Let's hear it for them. And now it's time to get started with the music. And while there are a lot of folks here in the barn tonight who know music, I think only one has written number one songs for stars like George Strait, made Grammy-winning bluegrass albums, and hosted the Americana Honors and Awards. Who would I be talking about? Who else but our own Jim Lauderdale? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Keith. Well, folks, uh, well, a quick story about this song I'm about to do. I was heading over to England to do a record, and I only had one song written. And I was going to my plane, and uh, I missed it here in Nashville. And so I had to wait for the next one. And then when I got to JFK to, to go over to the United Kingdom, the, the connection was real tight. And I ran to the plane, and of course, I was already frazzled and everything. And I... I sat down on the seat, and while I was still out of breath, I pulled a book out of my trusty backpack, and it was a book about Memphis by our own Larry Nager there. there and, and, uh, and there was uh, something in there about somebody said, well, they took their sweet time doing it, and so I thought, okay, wait. So I, 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 when I got there to the UK, I wrote this song. So this one is, uh, it made it on the album. Well, you're taking your sweet time While you're making me wait on down the line They say that love is faithful and kind Oh, you're taking your sweet time Thanks, everybody. And welcome to Music City Roots, live from the Loveless Barn. And we're so glad you could join us. 
Now, no self-respecting show from Nashville in the golden age of radio was without an MC at the podium. Right. Right and folks, we have the best there is. Please welcome the golden voice of Keith Bilbrey. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. I like that song. Thank you. Do that part for me one more time where you go, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're taking. Yeah, you're taking. I, I like that. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Keith. Yeah. Oh. oh. Ah. Is there a chiropractor in the house? Okay, let's. Uh, <laughs> and over there in the chat room, He's gonna tell you all about the lineup we have tonight and a few words about our artists to get the stories behind the songs. He's our interview guy, Mr. Craig Havighurst. Yeah, there he is. Hey, hey. Good to be back here for another Wednesday. And uh, yeah, that, that sort of thing, it's sort of a country singer move they teach you yeah. at uh, Country Singer University. Country 101. Uh -huh. right there. Yeah. Uh, great lineup tonight, varied lineup, and some artists we're welcoming back who we've uh, loved in the past, and uh, some, uh, a, a first-timer who I'm particularly excited about. Returning for another uh, set of, of great music here with a new album, and uh, just blew us away the first time, and they've just done nothing but, but blow up in the, in the two years since. The Wood Brothers are here with a new record called The Muse, and a sound they just keep refining. It's so great. And uh, from Chicago, an uh, uh, artist I've been listening to for 12, 13 years. Funny, tender, poignant, a little weird, a little amazing, uh, a lot amazing. Robbie Folks. Yeah. We've been waiting to get him for a long time. Brought an acoustic band tonight. And from right here in town, a very interesting band that I'm uh, just getting to know, uh, Shelf Dusters Union is, come, is here. Yeah. With our buddy Travis Stinson and some new friends. And out of the Northeast, uh, making their debut here on the show, Poor Old Shine. We get to hear what they sound like. And off we go with a really fascinating opening act and lots of keyboards on stage. Well, Friends, up now is an artist with one foot in California and one foot in Nashville. He's written and created in both music hubs, and he's worked with great producers like T-Bone Burnett and the late, great cowboy Jack Clement. His string of acclaimed recordings since the 1990s have shown an artist on a journey who's capable of many voices and styles. We're excited to welcome to our stage, A.J. Croce. Thank you. Taken more or less is all the same. Less is more, and less it's fame. There isn't wrong, there isn't right. Just shades of darkness, shades of light. New beginnings, old regrets. It's worth forgiving one forgets. About a photo booth picture of a man who never gets a break. It's like a little memento of the it's hard to take
The songs that I'm playing tonight are from a record that I've uh, been recording for the last year, uh, and it started here in Nashville with a uh, uh, so couple songs that I recorded with Cowboy Jack Clement. And uh, you can clap. <laughs> so uh, this project's called 12 Tales. I recorded 12 songs with six legendary American producers. Uh, traveled all over the country, worked in their studios with, with their bands, and, and uh, had an amazing time. This song, uh, I wrote the, uh, wrote the verse uh, in Amsterdam, and, uh, and I wrote the, uh, the chorus here in Nashville, and then I wrote, yeah, I think that's right. Here we go. Get it, baby, down, down, to your money now. Am I where you pay the man? Here's another one that uh, we recorded with Jack, and uh, it's called Momentary Lapse of Judgment. Uh, don't know if you ever have one of those, but I have them daily, and um, wrote this with my friend Anna Eggy, and it goes something like this. One, two, three. 
Everybody's heard a song Was it wish it was it wrong Walk to a bar on Sunday Drank ourselves straight through the Monday morning Had a staff and then a few We work it out, we always do With just a momentary lapse of just Just a momentary lapse of just Old friend who called again for money Never pays us back, honey Can't afford to fill this cup Can't say no when it calls us up a crime A little, maybe more we're gonna do it That's what's so all with just a momentary lapse of judge Just a momentary lapse of judge Set it straight, right on time or a little later on. All sense is gone. Play it now. Every day and night Have a little baby more we're gonna do it That's what's so all with just a momentary lapse of just Just a momentary lapse of just Just a momentary lapse of judgment Just a momentary lapse of judgment Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. This, uh, this tale off of 12 Tales was uh, produced by Alan Toussaint uh, down in New Orleans. And uh, it's one of my favorites on the record. It's called Tarnish and Shining. The child of justice 
Time for one more? Okay. Well, we're going to finish the uh, set off with a song that I wrote with uh, Leon Russell earlier this year. And uh, um, it was a real thrill. I felt really honored to be able to work with one of my heroes and uh, someone who's been on this stage before. This was uh, another song produced by Alan Toussaint. It's called Rolling On. It's fun to sing. And uh, if you feel like uh, singing it, uh, it's really simple. You just sing rolling on. Is that cool? Okay. Gonna have 
so much, AJ. It's awesome. AJ Croce. Yeah. Woo. Well, folks, uh, now don't forget that Music City Roots is now on public television. A one-hour show that airs here in Nashville on National Public Television, Channel 8 at 7 p.m. sharp. Now tune in or set your DVRs. Now, the shows that we're filming right now will air next fall in season two. For listening of PBS affiliates around the country that carry our show, go to musiccityroots.com slash APT. Now, I'll tell you what, here's uh, talking about slash. an APT. <laughs> here's the guy right here. This guy put the A back in PT. There we go. Mr. Keith Bilbury. And it was a tough job too, let me tell you. Well, you know, folks, when people around the world think of Tennessee, first things that come to mind are great music. Well, we certainly got plenty of that around here. Great food, no shortage of that around the loveless barn. Now, you jumped your queue last week. I was watching online. So wait till I get finished, okay? And, of course, what else? All right. Thank you, Myra. Looks like you're enjoying it tonight. That's why we're so thankful for our friends and sponsors at Old Smoky Moonshine. Tennessee's first legal moonshine distilled in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, right there in the heart of the Smokies. Now, whether you're enjoying some of their classic white lightning or tossing a couple of moonshine-soaked cherries in your Coke, they remind you to always shine responsibly. Old Smoky's now available nationwide through your local package store. Here in the bar, the Old Smoky Lightning Lemonade was a huge hit during our summer months. You can find out more at OldSmokyMoonshine.com and make sure to like Old Smoky Moonshine on Facebook. Now we're going to head on over to the Griffin Technology chat room. Griffin Technology is one of the world's foremost creators of accessories for home, mobile, and personal technology. They're all about communication and so is our friend Craig Haverhurst. Thanks, Keith Bilbrey. These guys have had an incredible last couple of years. Uh, please uh, make them welcome. There is Oliver, there is Chris, the Wood Brothers, and drummer John O'Ricks. Thank you. You're a duo and a trio. You're really a trio. When the, the band really gelled around the, the role of uh, John on drums and, and hand percussion, uh, was it, that was a, a pretty big step in the journey of the band, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, a very deliberate step. We wanted to uh, fill things out a little bit, and Jono is a multi-talented dude. He, he does, uh, he, he's a fine singer and drummer and, and keyboard player, and uh, he seems to make Chris dance, too, so that's good. <laughs> so the new record is called The Muse, and I've just gotten started listening to it, but it's only, uh, it's pretty new here, weeks old, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, wonderful project. You, uh, it says in the album bio that took you guys to sort of, uh, the phrase they used was a deeper level of collaboration. What, what, what did that mean exactly? <laughs> Scary. <laughs> well, you know, Oliver and I uh, have lived in different parts of the country for quite some time um, since we started the band, and so it made writing music together a little challenging. We had to use modern technology and send uh, MP3s back and forth and do what we could on the road, but now we all live in Nashville, actually. We're a Nashville-based band now. <laughs> 
Happens to everybody. Good. Welcome, so, welcome uh, to the town. Yeah, one of the benefits is that we can actually sit in the same room together and write music, and we can actually rehearse, which is the first time we've been able to do that in the eight years that we've started this band. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's a big improvement, I think. The, the record, uh, Smoke Ring Halo, is where... Well, I had heard your, your Blue Note releases, and it felt almost like a different... Obviously, that label has a different culture than Southern Ground, the, the, prod, the uh, label that Smoke Ring came out on and that y'all are involved in now, Zach Brown's label with the, with the Atlanta bass and a great Nashville studio. But culturally, th th it speaks a little bit to how the records kind of sounded to me. Um, can you describe kind of the difference... Is there, is, there a, is there a pre Southern Ground and a post Southern Ground sound or feeling, or, or did you just were you able to just spend more time touring and working on the music together? Uh, well, I think it has to do with the collaborative part that Chris mentioned, and you know, for our latest record, we had we had Buddy Miller producing, and yeah. and uh, you know, that sort of put us in the Nashville frame of mind, and just uh, uh, he sort of became the fourth member for a couple of weeks, and really, uh, I don't know made us, he got us to do more of what we do. So he just sort of got what we do and he said he made sure we did it. <laughs> He's pretty low key, but I have a feeling that there's a lot more. It's a lot going uh, on under there. Yeah. yeah, but he has probably subtle ways of communicating it. Yeah. Jono, what did you observe about the sessions on this, this record? What, what, what struck you? What did you enjoy most? Uh, it was really comfy. Okay. Uh, the studio's yeah. comfy. Working with Buddy is really comfy. And uh, I don't know, it was, it was really... Just kind of flew by. We had a good time, and we just did what we did. What we did. I don't know. Did Were the we songs do. all ready to go, or do they do they kind of get finished, uh, or some even started when you finally hit the recording studio? Nothing was started there, but it was all different for all the different songs. You know. Any feeling about how the repertoire is changing, or the styles of the, the way you all approach writing and collaborating on actually getting the songs done? Has that shifted at all, or? Uh, definitely, yeah, the process has shifted just because it's become more collaborative over the years. Um, you know, I was coming from this band, Modesky, Martin, and Wood, and there was a strong jazz background, and, and Oliver had a band, King Johnson, and, and had a strong blues and songwriting background. Um, but we played together as kids, you know, and uh, when Oliver left the house, um, and he went off and ended up in Atlanta, and I went to music school up in the Northeast and ended up in New York City, and... So it, this, this, this last few years has been a coming together of, of stylistically and just, you know, our different backgrounds. Luckily, the, about 80% of all of our influences between the bands that Oliver played in and that I played in were really the same. Overlap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty classic touchstones then. I think so, yeah. It's just a matter of where you live, you do different things. So living in New York City, I sort of came up with some different stuff over the last years. What, what, what would you say that your formal training and working with a pretty, you know, a pretty out there and sophisticated band, uh, did, and you know, melding that with a folk tradition and, and more of a world where guys learn by ear and by feel. Uh, does that, do you feel that strongly? I feel it in the way the bass lines have a more prominent role than most you know, Americana bands. That's one way that it feels to me, a lot of articulated, strong stuff. How, how else? Well, it's, um, like I said, you know, if you took Oliver's band King Johnson and Modesky, Martin and Wood, there's actually most of the material that each of those bands are influenced by is the exact same material. Just the fact that we developed with Modesky, Martin and Wood music in New York City and it was a very different atmosphere. And Oliver was in, in the South and in Atlanta. And, and uh, so I think that has a lot to do with it. But it, it, it's nice to bring that energy that I developed with the other bands uh, into a context like this. Uh, this all began with your dad, I guess, who was a folk musician, but as a, a hobbyist, not a professional, just but played a lot of music. Is that right? Yeah, I think he's uh, one of those guys who could have been a professional, but his, his dad probably made him uh, go to college instead. And, uh, but uh, yeah, so we, but he was a huge influence. He was a real folky from the late 50s, early 60s, and always played around the house and had a, had a huge repertoire of songs. And so... Um, the way it feels like to us, I think in some ways, is that you know, we didn't appreciate that when we were kids and we would sit around and watch him play and sort of soak in that simple singer-songwriter thing. And then we went off and did all these projects and learned how to play and got all technical and then we came full circle into kind of back to what he was doing in a way. So 
um, I think that's a, a common thing for musicians. They take this ride and they come back around. So, right. That's what it feels of riding, like. Riding. What's the what's the fall and winter hold? Where 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 are we going to see you? Anything this winter that you're excited about? Going overseas or anything like that? Uh, yeah, a little bit of everything. We're we're uh, pushing this record and and touring behind it. So we're off to. Uh, the West Coast in the winter and Northeast, and uh, we're going to Europe in April, and um, so we're just going to be busy, busy. Well, it's just felt like I've just seen your name more and more. This the, the attention level, the the awareness level, just seems to be rising. It's fantastic to watch it happen. They do have a lot of instruments to uh, set up here, so we may just hang out a little bit longer, but that's all right. That's all right. Um, it, we might dive into the muse just a little bit deeper. There's that great title track. There is a you know a sort of uh, I feel like the same kind of range of, t of of styles and feelings from the previous record. Uh, any songs that you feel like said uh, say to you what the record really represents? What what you know if you picked one or two to show to people? Well, I think uh, you know we're we're really exploring this more acoustic side on part of the record, which features Jana's uh, percussion instrument, the shatar. And um, and the cool thing about that is I don't there's not a lot of people playing that, and there's not a lot of people that play bass like Chris, and um, and we're doing a lot of singing together. So songs like the Muse, um, but also like Keep Me Around is another song that we really like. That yeah, restrained sort of, and but really beautiful yeah, too. Yeah, and things that we sort of recorded up around a few mics standing in the same room. We, yeah, that's so. one thing that noted that this was a very very much a live to tape and, and where everybody was mixing and bled in together. You had to get it right or do it again. Kind yeah, of yeah, exactly. And we have some you know some more rock and roll kind of things on there too that are more electric, but. Um, but I think maybe what, what stands apart from some of the other stuff we've done is this, this sort of acoustic trio stuff. All right. Well, we'll get to hear some of it later. Thanks, guys. The Wood right. Brothers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Playing at the end of the show. Center stage, going to sing for some, about some chili for y'all. Allie Sutton and company. That's right. And now it's time for a word from our sponsor, Vietti Chili. Like the old days and the good days, the good old days when the leaves begin to fall to the ground. Football time, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama. No Titans. Let's make enough chili to go around. Yeti chili, Yeti chili sure sounds good to me. It slow and eat it fast. Another can better make it last. Yeti chili sure sounds good to me. And to me. Yeti chili sure sounds good to me. The Yeti chili sure sounds good to me. by Michael Jezeski himself of Music City Roots. And now let's get back to the show with the one and only Mr. Jim Lauderdale. Well, thank you very much, Allie Sutton. <laughs> well, folks, this next band's credo celebrates honesty and handcrafted creativity. With the collection of instruments from the traditional to the unusual and a spirit of joy and community, They've been entertaining audiences around their base in the Northeast and around the country. They've recently been added to the roster of the prestigious Signature Sounds label. So get ready and welcome to the stage from Stores, Connecticut, Poor Old Shine.
Thank you so much, everybody. We are so thrilled to be here. Um, we are called Poor Old Shine. We are thrilled that our debut album will be coming out November 5th on Signature Sounds. We have it here tonight, um, a little bit advanced for you. And thank you so much. We are deeply honored to be here.
made from Pittsburgh steel has taken on the hellos and the goodbyes out here. And I'm in that city and it ain't so pretty and I'm feeling dizzy from the hurry all around and now that old me I thought was dying slowly well I'm
everybody. We are Coral Shine. Coral Shine. Great. Thank you. It's awesome, man. It's great. Poor old Shine. Let's hear it for him again. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm talking about, That's Keith. It. That's it. That is what I'm talking about. And you know what else I'm talking about? What Keith? else are you talking you about? You know, this yet? this fine bunch of folks out there, we'd we'd like to join forces with them, with, with Music City Roots. Would you? Would you join forces with us? Would you? Would you join our community? Would you? Would you be part of our community? Huh? You sound like a you, preacher. You yeah. know, <laughs> all you've got to do, folks, you, you can do it so many different ways. You could, you could join us on Facebook, Twitter, and you can subscribe to our Music City Roots YouTube channel, which is about to pass six million views. Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh, now, and we'll notify you whenever new videos are posted. Does that sound like a bargain or what? It's going to cost you absolutely nothing. I like that. So, yeah, I, that's music to my ears. You know, they had me with It's Free. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what. Now, here's, speaking of free, here's a guy who's going to set you free. Are, are there any songs this, about like, I mean, somebody liking you, like on Facebook? You need to work on that. That's a good idea. That sounds like it could she be the next. Me, then she hit. liked me, then she loved me. Or she liked me, then she unliked me. Or defriended me, or whatever. Whatever they okay, do. Okay, never mind. Big thanks to the good folks at Star 129 Diamond. If there's a special occasion coming up in your life that demands the very best, well, you owe it to yourself to see what we think is the most significant advancement in diamond cutting technology in almost 100 years. See the amazing Star 129 Diamond for yourself at select fine jewelers all over the country. Here locally in Nashville at Forster's Diamond Outlet at their beautiful showroom on Hickory Hollow Parkway. And take a look at Star129.com. This is a diamond created by Bob Forster from Diamond Outlet. You'll be amazed at the patented technology they've used to create a diamond guaranteed to come with the industry's highest rating for sparkle. And isn't that what a diamond's all about? We'd also like to thank our friends at the Nashville scene. If you want to know what's happening in and around Music City, do what we do. Look for a fresh copy at local newsstands every Thursday or visit NashvilleScene.com. Griffin Technology is proud to be a part of Music City Roots and privileged to make the gear you need to power, play, protect, create, and connect to the music that means the most to you. And that's why their slogan is, Connect to Play. Now over to the Griffin Technology chat room, and it's Craig Haverhurst. Thanks, Keith. Folks, say uh, hello and thank you one more time to A.J. Croce. Thank you very much. So nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, you we were just chatting about your experience in... Nashville, you did spend some time as a full-time resident here pretty recently. Yeah, yeah, I moved in 2008, lived here until about 2011, and um, wrote every day with a lot of different great people and played on some people's records and uh, played piano on all kinds of stuff, and it was fun. I loved it, made a lot of friends. What was, your, what was in your, uh, your mind about Nashville, and what did you discover that might have changed your uh, opinion or your preconceived ideas? I guess when I moved here, I thought like I might be able to get a gig playing some um, sessions, uh, playing piano, because uh, it might be possible even on country records, because there's such an uh, R&B influence. Yep. And that was sort of my, the roots of my piano playing. And, um, and when I came here, I found that I was doing all this pop music. And it, and it was completely an Americana stuff that was totally different than the country stuff I expected. So I guess musically, it's one of the most diverse cities I've been to. As is your, your, your bent. You, you've made records across the spectrum of styles. Yeah. Um, is that been your outlook your whole life? Just loving a little piano songwriter scene there? Yeah. Traditional blues and jazz and, and pop? I mean, you've really covered the waterfront. I, I just... You know, I love music, so I liked all different kinds of stuff, and and um, it's probably not the smartest thing to like to go from one place to another, but just artistically, it's really um, the the best thing for me. <laughs> um, working with these producers on both coasts, as it were, 
um, Jack Clement here, Alan Toussaint in, in New Orleans. Uh, give us just a little insight into what it's like to be with one great musical mind and the vibe they set, and then the contrast when you go and sit down with Alan Toussaint, for example. Well, each, each producer is completely different because they come from different backgrounds and uh, musical backgrounds. So uh, some are uh, great engineers, some are great songwriters, some are great um, musicians, and they all uh, bring something unique to the project. So with Alan Toussaint, he was one of those guys that's an amazing arranger, songwriter, musician, and uh, just his gifts really brought a lot to it. Uh, with Cowboy, his sensibility of simplistic uh, recording uh, was sort of the charm of what we did together. With Mitchell Froom trying to figure, uh, think outside the box with traditional instruments was his thing. And, and all of it was inspiring. And so how do you hope that this record then holds together thematically as you release tracks from very different places and times? It's, they're called 12, the record is called 12 Tales. Yes. Are you, do you have a, a plan for uh, making sure that they, they, they are 12? <laughs> to, they Cohesive, yeah. yeah. In, in one way, um, you know, this record is, uh, is come out one song a month this year on iTunes. And, um, and that was a challenge, you know. Um, but coming next year in February, Compass, which is based here in Nashville, Compass Records, is going to be releasing uh, the album as a whole. And I feel like initially my thought was that it was, it was six uh, individual 45s in a way, because, okay, right. b because, because each, um, each producer had two songs. So it's like an A and a B side. And, um, and so, in a way, I just kept in my mind that, you know, all these songs were written by me in a frame of time, and so that's going to be the consistent aspect of it. And will we hear the, the tracks in succession then? One and two, no, one and two? Or no. You're, you're mixing it up, you No, think? we're mixing it up okay. because uh, it was just more interesting to do it that way. Right. So speaking of piano, it sounds like that was your first instrument and the one where you've done your most concentrated woodshedding and practice, but I think you've picked up the guitar more in more recent years as a writing tool. Oh, I, and I love it. I love playing guitar. You know, uh, for me, just um, it's, you know, coming to it completely ignorant, knowing nothing, and then just learning it from scratch by ear, starting like I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Really simplified my writing, and, uh, and it's fun for me every day. Was music just destiny for you? I mean, one assumes that kids of, yeah. of great musicians uh, have a kind of first step in that direction, but it's not inevitable, is it? When did you realize this was going to be your life, too? I was 12. Uh, I got hired to play a bat mitzvah, and I thought, like, I got paid 20 bucks, and I thought it was awesome. I thought I might be able to do well if I kept on practicing, and that was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a very different journey than anything influenced by your dad. This was not any way that Somebody said, we've been waiting for you, kid, to get old enough to make records. Yeah. No. Uh, no I mean, people, people did that, but they wanted to hear his stuff, you know? Oh, so, yeah. So, so for me, you know, I didn't play any of his music for 20 years of, uh -huh. of, of uh, being a musician. And then, and then about, um, you know, 10 years ago, I started, you know, touching on some of his stuff when I play live, because I love it. Yeah, I bet people love it, too. Yeah. yeah. Great. It's good to meet you. And good to meet thanks, you. Great to hear you. Thanks for opening our show. He'll be back for the jam. A.J. Croce, everybody. Thank you. And over there on the stage, Keith Bilbrey. All right, you're listening to Music City Roots on Nashville's Hippie Radio, WHPY Bellevue, Nashville, 94.5 on your FM dial. And, of course, we're broadcasting live from the big old barn out behind the world-famous Loveless Cafe at the intersection of Highway 100 and the historic Natchez Trace Parkway. It's a beautiful fall night out here. For more than 30 years, the Loveless Cafe has been shipping out those delicious preserves and country smoked meats you always hear us talk about this year. Think about giving someone something downright tasty with a gift from the Loveless Cafe. You can go online and view their catalog of gift baskets at catalog.loveless cafe.com or just stop by in person and check it out. I don't know where she is running around here. AJ, today's AJ's birthday. That's Ashley right. Jean Let's Trot. give her a big AJ. And happy birthday, yes, Ashley happy Jean birthday. Trot. See, see. Our beloved AJ. It's Todd birthday. Mayo and John Walker think they run the show. Forget it. Without AJ and Lori, it folds tomorrow. That's right. Absolutely. That's big right. hand for AJ and happy birthday. Yes. Once again, a man who's not celebrating a birthday, Jim Lauderdale. Thank you, Keith. 
Well, friends, every week we hear the voice of our friend Travis Stinson backing up Ali Sutton on the Vietti Chili songs. And if you've been a regular, you've hopefully heard Travis sing in front of his bluegrass project, the Volunteer String Band. Well, that fine voice is part of another group as well. One that turns it up and rocks a little harder. Please welcome our friend of the show, Travis and his friends in the Shelf Dusters Union. It's an honor and a privilege to be here at Music City Roots. So many great musicians up here on this stage. Me and Anthony played in a rock and roll band 15 or some odd years ago, but who's counting? And it's so cool to be playing at a wonderful place. All y'all look so beautiful, and everybody has been so kind to us. Thank you so much from all of us in the Shelf Dusters Union. Actually, this next song is about 20 years old. Jason and I started playing it back then. Here we go. It's called Buy a Snake. chair for a month 
than a day now Not a damn thing going my way I'm just a sitting waiting on the mailman Bringing me my government pay I'm gonna buy me a snake Maybe a cobra Maybe And a dog in a house once And now everything's gone to hell All I got are bills to pay now And half a house to sell I'm gonna walk right down to the pet store With my government check in my hand I'm gonna tell them when I get to the door now I query I'm in a bag of sand oh, I'm gonna buy me a snake Maybe a cobra Oh, maybe a boa Maybe a python Problems and I've got mine. I can't always. 
want to thank all these guys. Of course, you met Travis Stenson. We got Travis Collinsworth over here on the bass. Jason Short, all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio, on the drums. And John Wallum on the keyboards. My name is Anthony Carell. Thank you so much. Carell, he's the one that wrote all these songs, got all of us together. He's the man. He wrote this song about time he was spinning in the Paul. Hope you don't mind me uh, saying anything, but this song's about. Go ahead. <laughs> I 
got a lot of things that bug me. I got a lot of things that don't. Every time I think I found, don't know just a, what I want. I wanna thank you, friends, for waiting and say they'll come a day. Everything I leave behind me is a little bit of myself. Everything I think I found it, I wanna be on someplace else. I wanna thank you, friends, for waiting, knowing we got work to do. The Shelf Dusters Union. That's great. The Shelf Dusters Union, ladies and gentlemen. Mighty fine, Travis. The voice of Travis Stinson. It's great, man. It's great. Well, folks, it's time to turn things over to my friend, the Colonel and Keith. Colonel Littleton is on duty tonight, and I want oh, you to look at this beautiful oh. bag he's brought. What do, you, what do you call that, Colonel? We call the trekker. You're talking to the mic. We call it the trekker, and uh, you can actually carry biscuits in it. Oh, really? You can put so, biscuits. So that's, that's why right. I think Lauderdale would be the one and everything. So yeah. anyway, I liked that song while I go. I'm going to get me a snake. I think uh -huh. I'll go out and buy that. I think that's a good song. <laughs> Who's here for the first time? Who's here for the first time? Okay. First time. Explain it to them. All right. The reason you want to know that is we give away this beautiful bag, and tonight it's the Trekker bag we're giving away, and you got to fill out the form, carry it over and put it in our booth in the box, and we'll draw it before the last song. It's like a horse race. If you ain't got a horse in the race, you ain't going to win. win. If you ain't got one of these in there, I'm not going to draw your name, and it's only a six, $567 bag. So anyway, it's worth going over there. Did I spit on everything? Yes, it's, you did. Thank you. It's worth filling out the form. So you're going to fill out and win, we'll draw your name. Why 567? Why not 565? 567. 50. 50, okay. That's right. And it looked good on Lauderdale, too. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it did. It did look good on it. Let's you give him a big hand. You need Colonel to get Littleton, you one of those. Great yeah. friend of the All show. Right. Be sure and go register. Keith, I'll leave things in, with your able voice. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Well, folks, I know you have options where you choose to conduct your financial business as a not-for-profit financial cooperative. May I suggest the Send Federal Credit Union? They recognize the importance of member loyalty. That's why they're pleased to once again reward members who bring the majority of their business to the credit union by returning $8 million in bonus dividends and loan interest funds over the past seven years. Ascend has returned more than $39 million to its members. To learn more about Ascend, visit them at ascendfcu.com. 
www.ncuaconsumerprotection.org. Federally insured by the NCUA, membership is limited. And if you don't have credit union membership available at your work, you can join by or you can join by joining the Nature Conservancy. Ask for details at your local Ascend office. The Tennessee chapter of the Nature Conservancy is 35 years old this year. And just what have they got to show for it? Well, how about 280,000 acres protected right here in Tennessee? 29 state natural areas, 10 wildlife management areas, and two national wildlife refuges all right here in Tennessee. The Nature Conservancy protects nature not only for its own sake, but also because nature sustains our health and our way of life, the trees that clean our air, the rivers that supply our drinking water, and so much more. Visit nature.org slash Tennessee to learn more about the Nature Conservancy and what it's doing for you in nature here and all around the world. Now it's time to go back to Craig over in the chat room, sponsored by Griffin Technology, making it easier for you to connect to play. How about it, Craig? Thanks, Keith. Let's have just a word about the Shelf Dusters Union with uh, songwriter, guitar player, Anthony Carell. Please make him welcome. We all know Travis. He loves to sing, doesn't like to talk. So he's back there. And Anthony, Anthony, you, he go back a long time. You've, you've been, this variations of this band have been up and running for 12 years, you said at least. What's the, what's the background about you making music in Nashville? Uh, well, actually, uh, the drummer Jason and I played in a, a band in Ohio, and I came to Nashville in 1998. And uh, one thing I found about this city is there's a lot of talent here. You know, people, people pumping your gas, delivering your pizza, selling your chili are uh, really talented individuals. And I, I had some songs, and I wanted to make sure that people really heard the potential of the songs and heard what I was saying. And uh, I knew that Travis was a, a, a good opportunity for me to do that. Um, especially we met, uh, we played together in a band called Upstream, which uh, uh, some of your uh, producers are big fans of, apparently. Good. And, and then, uh, yeah, just been making, making CDs and uh, writing songs and hanging out and playing since then. And talking to you earlier, I learned that you, uh, you spent many years selling CDs in the old retail, the old record stores. You guys Camelot remember when people would buy music, music in the stores, right? And uh, this, is the, this is the great, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very visible shift. It gets talked about, but it's so weird when something is not there anymore and you get used to it not being there. And I mean, from first half of my time in Nashville, Tower Records was just a place of such importance. And then over the space of about two years, it's like, zzz. what What have you felt as you've, as you've watched the world? When, what do you, when you think back to that experience of selling music to people hand to hand, as it were? Well, on one hand, it's bad for some artists that uh, sort of depended on marketing and a bit of the fluff, but I think the real music gets to the, to the people and people search it out. The, the listeners will find what's good and, and will go out and look for it. And the internet and shows like this have really made a huge difference. It's an opportunity for people like me to share music with people like this that back then I never would have had, I never would have had right. access to. So one door closes, another door opens, Absolutely. I guess. What are you all doing with this band these days? Uh, any aspirations, anything you want, you're feeling like uh, recording or, or, or just what's the, what's the hopes right now? We've got a new record that's about halfway finished. Um, if anybody wanted to invest in the other half, let me know afterwards. Um, and we can get some studio time and finish it. Maybe uh, first of the year, we'll have an album out, Shelf Dusters Union. Great. Now, also, another interesting thing was your time in Nepal. Uh, this wasn't a quick visit. You, you really spent some time there and really tried to make some music happen there, or carried your music over there. Uh, give us a quick background on what that was like and what you found there. And uh, a few years ago, I traveled to Asia and ended up in uh, Kathmandu. And I met an absolutely wonderful woman named Sarda. She's my wife, and she's also a singer and a songwriter and decided to stay there for a while. Um, played a lot of music, played with people from all over the country and really got to share, or all over the world, that is, and really got to share um, songs with, with uh, people who never would have had access to them, again, like we say. Uh, especially over there, internet, you know, uh, 
all of these things aren't really available to them uh, the way they are here. So it's it's person to person. It's one at a time, and that yeah. was a wonderful experience. And and, and the, you know the idealist in me wants to believe that if you went to a a remote place in Asia and you took a guitar out and you started singing American folk songs that it would be kumbaya and people would be like yay and loving it but it, it's probably a little more complicated than that it's, yeah. everybody wants to hear Hotel California <laughs> <clears throat> that's the number one so- requested song in Asia I'm sure of it that and uh, like Leo Sayer for some reason they're big fans of Leo Sayer oh well play some Woody Guthrie for him and with time. We'll do what we can. All right. Thanks a lot. Anthony Carell from Shelf Dusters Union. Keep your eye out peeled for that band. Thank you, sir. Jim. All right. Well, here's an artist we've been hoping to have on our show for a very long time now. He was there at the dawn of the modern alternative country movement with songs that could be lonesome, ornery and mean, humorous, or heart-rending, or just... You know, or just downright great, as I say. He's been one of my favorites for a long time. His catalog of albums over the past 15 years has shown consistent creativity and intensity. From the great city of Chicago now, here's the magnificent Robbie Folks. Thank you very much. One year free and single And my how we've grown You swing with the stars While I'm in this bar Drinking alone Yes, you're flying high Live it up while Cause I've fallen, fallen, I'll remain. Time's the cure. This stuff that they pour just helps with the pain. Your wild thirst for pleasure. Like there's no tomorrow I live like there's only yesterday But who will break free from this sorrow And who have a lifetime to pay Just tear it up, crazy angel to be here. Nashville, Tennessee. It's like the wings of a snow white dove. It feels great being here from Chicago, where it's also cold like here. It's uh, not too different. Uh, my name's Robbie, uh, like, the, like Jim said, and I've got uh, a new record out, and we're doing a couple songs from that. We're taking advantage of this, uh, of this real swanky place to uh, play the bluegrass and do some songs from my new record. It's called Gone Away Backward, and I'll be out later hawking them over there at the table. Um, and the record's kind of a small group acoustic uh, record with five players on it in different kind of combinations, and three of them are on stage tonight. And uh, 
Let's see, over there, uh, I'd like to introduce them one at a time. Over there on the resophonic guitar is a good friend of mine, been playing with me for about 20 some years, Robbie Gerso, over there. <laughs> Singing the tenor parts and playing the bass tonight, a bluegrass hero of mine, Ron Spears, over here. Ron Spears. The young man of the band. And over here on the fiddle, just looking like a million bucks, and you've seen him play with many acts all over town, including our mutual friend John Cowan, who uh, one of the great singers of the age, and Shad Cobb is one of the great fiddlers of the age. Shad Cobb over here. We're gonna uh, try this tune right now. This is uh, this is about a guy that uh, moves from Virginia up to uh, New York City and uh, gets his butt kicked and uh, then comes back again. It's called Sometimes the Grass is Really Greener. Dusty shack high in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It was tough work, brown dirt, and bluegrass songs. Sweet hickory filled the air. Daddy's love was hard but fair. If I knew how rich I was, I'd not have gone. Oh, but the city called my name and I came running with my young man's hopes and my daddy's old guitar. I played the dives and paid some dues, singing every tune I knew. And them homesick ones I sang the best by far Now I've seen the sun go down on the streets of New York town And I've watched it from the hills of old Virginia Beauty's what the eye beholds One man's dirt's another's gold Oh, but sometimes the grass is really greener Company man confessed he liked me, but he'd have to shave a few red budges down. Cut my hair like Brooks and Dunn's, trained the banjo for some drums, cause no one would buy that old high lonesome sound. Now I don't know just what this deal has got me. I came out of band and I lost the ones I had. I've worn my heart right through my sleeve, singing a song I don't believe. I believe I'll go back home to mom and dad. Now I've seen the sun go down on the streets of New York town, and I've watched it from the hills of old Virginia. Beauty's what the eye beholds, one man's dirt's another's gold. Oh, but sometimes the grass is really greener. Shack high in the Blue Ridge Mountains And when I die it's on this farm to lay me down And the hills will hear my song Cause it's there that I belong Man, you just can't shake old roots from southern ground Now I've seen the sun go down On the streets of New York town And I watched it from the hills of old Virginia Beauty's what the eye beholds One man's dirt's another's gold Oh, but sometimes the grass is really greener Sometimes the grass is really greener Thank y'all. Thanks very much. We'll do you uh, one more from uh, the new record. Gone away backward, in case I didn't mention that title enough so far. And this is a this is a song that you might identify with uh, if you've raised kids. I've raised a couple kids and uh, I try to give them a better environment than uh, than maybe I had when I was growing up. And uh, and then somewhere along the way, you notice that uh, your paths have kind of diverged, and that's the uh, subject of this song. It's called "That's Where I'm From." Mm -hmm. 
Back in the driveway, the end of the work day, and how fast that world disappears. A fresh lawn, a pine tree, a neighbor just like me that's worked all his life to get here. A man climbs as high as he can. But his heart belongs where it began I can see in my mind's eye A shack on a hillside And a mean billy goat on a chain Dad doing battle Dirt hard as gravel Never came. We'd shoot down a pheasant in flight and sing songs about Jesus all night. And that's where I'm from, where time passes slower. That's where I'm Two cars, a picket fence, that's where I've come. Dirt roads and double wides, that's where I'm from. school on a fast track and no calls to look back that place put a scar on my soul and I swore my young ones would never know hunger now the good life is all they know well I've watched them one thing separates them from me And that's where I'm from Where time passes slower That's where I'm from Where it's just man and no, sir Can't tell I'm White collar, a necktie, that's where I come. Half naked in the moonshine, that's where I'm from. If you've ever heard Hank Williams sing Brother, you know the whole blessed thing Cause that's where I'm from Where time passes slower That's where I'm from Where it's just ma'am and no sir A long way down a hard road, that's where I've come. Some 
place I can't go home to That's where I'm from Thanks very much. We're going to do uh, thank you. We're going to uh, do you guys one more tune. We really appreciate getting to play here on uh, Jim's show. How about it for Jim Lauderdale, one of the greatest talents in the world? I got to do his, he has a show with uh, Buddy Miller uh, that's on Sirius, and I got to do that this morning. And that was just like, speaking of the wings of a snow white dove, that was like a dream come true going over to his house. You've been over to Buddy's house? You gotta go. It's like, it's spotless. It's, really, it's great over there. And so many great guitars, you know. Uh, we're gonna do this one more tune, and this is uh, an older tune of mine from uh, the 90s. And it's in the key of D. It's called Let's Kill Saturday Night. One. Station in in February, by the way. Well, a dollar I make is a buck I owe, and a forty-hour week leaves ten to blow. Yeah, but every game in this town is just nickel and dime, and when the sun goes down, it feels like the last time. So down the main drag we ride. So there's a fire inside that's the one thing going I've got the Mustang loaded I've got a wrong to right And I've got a little red bullet Let's kill Saturday night Knock it out of its misery Nail that coffin tight High living that's history Let's kill Saturday night With a little man's lot, that's a prince's life. A prince with a lousy job, a prince with a working wife. Something in the big brain move, yeah, it never was so hard. To keep a 20 inch tube and a fenced in yard. Look at me one night with the moon high and the radio pounding. And brother, this town is gonna go. Shouting, I got the Mustang loaded. I got a wrong to right. I got a little red bullet. Let's kill Saturday night. Knock it out of its misery. Nail that coffin tight. High living that's history. Let's kill Saturday night.
guys very much for listening to us. Appreciate it. The great Robbie Folks. That was awesome, Robbie. The great Robbie Folks. Let's hear it for him. Yeah. Guys, that was tremendous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Great they job. put the scald on it, didn't they? Uh, the scald. Has, the scald. The scald has been done tonight. Yeah. That's great. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Keith Bilbury, ladies uh, and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much. We also ask that you support our sponsors because they support us. And they allow us to do our thing and bring you music in fresh and innovative ways, which is why we're so proud to have Nissan as one of our sponsors. Innovation, what Nissan is all about. Not only does Nissan support Music City Roots, they also support a variety of other artistic endeavors throughout the community. As Music City Roots continues to shake things up in the world of music, Nissan's doing the very same thing in the automotive world. Let me tell you, I had a an Altima for like a month when I was on the road. And I love that car. I'm going to go buy one if I can find one I can afford. We got any Nissan people help me out with that. But man, that thing was wonderful. 32 miles to the gallon. It was awesome. I've been waiting all this time to tell you that. It was great. Just recently, Nissan unveiled their new Altima, Pathfinder, and Sentra. And out this spring, you saw the all new Versa Note. Nissan's new hatchback. Nissan's local motto of Nashville Proud has never been more timely and appropriate. Not only are their vehicles innovative, their relationship with this great city grows deeper each and every day. We hope you'll check out Nissan on Facebook, become friends with them. Just search Nissan to join the community and find out more about their upcoming models and boundary-pushing innovations. Thank you from us and thank you from Nissan. Hey, guys and gals, we want to remind you that French's Boots is your headquarters this summer for the best deals on Justin Boots and more. French's can outfit you from your head to the heel of your classic Justin brand boots or Justin Gypsies for the ladies at the best prices anywhere. Step out in style with great selection of jeans, shirts, and hats and let them custom fit you with that pair of Justin Western or Justin Gypsy boots you've always wanted. Downtown on 2nd Avenue, listen, I am a boot fan. I've been wearing boots since I was a kid. Still got them on, always wear them. And that is one of the best looking boot stores I've ever seen down on 2nd Avenue. Check it out, there are boots everywhere you look and a lot of other things. So, so they get a fitting room. You can just sit there and watch the Cumberland River flow by. Makes good sense to shop at French's. They're all over the place. Just check it out, musiccityboots.com, and click on Justin Brand Boots. We'd also like to give a shout out to our friends at Digitech, the official office equipment provider here at Music City Roots. Take a look at those beautiful programs for just a sample of their quality. You can find them at digitechllc.com. Now, over to the chat room. Robbie, folks, it's good to have you here tonight. And here's Craig Haverhurst. Well, Robbie, folks, let's give him one more hand. That was fun. Wow, where to start? This record, Gone, gone Away Backward, really did strike me. It's a special project. Um, nice to hear you in a small acoustic environment. And they're really, I mean, the bluegrass uh, quality. So, so, in a sense, a little full circle. You spent some years with the great Special Consensus. Greg Cahill and those guys in a band that's been roll had great talents rolling through it for years. And uh, how important was bluegrass music in your musical influences at the point where you got that that gig and when you were kind of getting started as a, as a musician? Was it a, a core influence for you? I think it was kind of my main uh, instrumental skill. You know, when I was uh, growing up, I uh, I listened to a lot of uh, my parents' music, and uh, that was like Country Gentleman and uh, Carter Family and uh, and uh, you know, Flat and Scruggs, and so they were heavy into the bluegrass. And then when I got started, I, I kind of modeled myself on Doc Watson when I was uh, starting to flat pick, and uh, I enjoyed John Hartford's music. And then growing up in the 70s, a lot of the like, like a hippie progressive people like Sam Bush and the New Grass Revival, and, and John and, and others uh, really like uh, they spoke to me. If you remember that time, it was like uh, kind of cool that people that uh, were hippies and like uh, dressed kind of like you thought cool people dressed that they were playing the bluegrass music that was like an important like translating device to yeah, us right. that were young were you starting to write stuff that when you were in that special consensus context felt a little subversive for that style that they were like um 
we can't sing that. <laughs> well, you know, I think bluegrass, like uh, now in 2013, it seems to me that it's a lot more tolerant and open than it was That's even true. in the 80s when I did it. When I worked with Special Consensus, I brought in a Dwight Yoakam song, and there was a lot of like discussion with the label and within the band over whether that was pushing the envelope. To, and it was just Dwight Yoakam, you know. It wasn't like I was bringing in a Frank Zappa song or something. <laughs> Dude's from Kentucky, come on. Yeah. And so what you do on the guitar is so great, and, and it strikes me that you have more room to do what you want to do on the guitar in, in, a, in a bluegrass setting than maybe some of the country records or the rock, you know, kind of indie rock records you've made. Is it part of the, was that part of the pull? I mean, you've even got a great, this tune specific slope on the record I love. It's a, just a pure flat pick. Yeah, it's a fiddle ripper. tune with two guitars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love doing it, you know. I, I didn't do it as a vehicle to get out and play the guitar and do what I just did here, but that's kind of what it turned into these last couple of months since it came out. And uh, yeah, I'm just loving getting the, the space to play and getting to solo, like, you know, like I tried to solo five minutes ago in that, in that music. And, uh, and to hear like guys like Shad and Robbie play every night, it's just, it's just uh, blowing me away. Well, you mentioned Ron Spears on stage. You mentioned him in the notes to your record or maybe one of your blog posts about what a special thing it is to sing with him. And man. You heard him, right? He's I mean, like he's fantastic. an animal. And he, when I met him, he was like, Hi, I'm Ron. And then he sings up here. Yeah, and the moonshine seems to help. <laughs> What's your background with, with these guys? Well, with Robbie, the guy on the far end of the stage I've been working for uh, since 1990, I met him through the classified ad in the paper. And... Uh, that's how we met. And with Ron, you know, we were in this special consensus at different times. And Shad, I met through John Cowan maybe 10 years ago. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah. And you're also back on Bloodshot, I think, with this project. Am I right Bloodshot. about that? Yeah. Your old label. That's yeah. nice. In Chicago, too. It's yeah. flying the flag. You're wearing the Sox uh, uniform. Yeah. I, it's the only baseball team that I uh, do the anthem Ever for. Made. And it's... Uh, Made the cut. Southside team, and I'm not really a sports guy, but since they had me in to sing, you know, that's my team. And as we sign off, what's, what about Chicago has kept you there all these years? Pizza. <laughs> in a word? Yeah. And baseball. Great sports town. There you go. Terrific. Robbie, thanks for being here, man. It's Thank so you. good to have you. Pleasure. Robbie, folks. Thanks for listening. Come back and see us again. All right, what's up over there? Oh. Hey. oh. Did you doze off? Are you kidding me? Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, he really didn't. I, I no, just I wanted to remind everybody that you are listening to Music City Roots right here. Uh, he was talking about hippies. Well, Nashville's hippie radio station, WHPY Bellevue, Nashville, 94.5. Toss back to Jim. Toss back to Jim. Toss. That's what it says. Toss. Well, folks, the band taking the stage right now put on a set here at Roots about a year and a half ago that folks are still talking about. With two powerful voices and an acoustic instrument intensity that's just mind-boggling, these brothers pack a lot of music into a small space. They're celebrating a wonderful new album called The Muse, and we're so proud to have them here tonight. Please welcome the Wood Brothers. Oh, 
when the line and you land on your feet almost every time and to keep me around and lonely to go and come you think you don't need them but you gotta have some try asking the dark when the light comes from hello i'm faith and i might be blind but i'm the one's gonna keep towing the line and you're lying on your feet almost every time Yeah, you keep me around. I won't let you down. You keep me around. As I sit on the edge of this never made bed Oh, guitar in my lap, a new tune in my head There she stands in the door, we just brush in her hair It's my beautiful muse in her underwear And if I was thinking, I'd be thinking that Whoever you are, for the muse and the soul guitar. The times like these are so sweet and so true, and thinking's the last thing that you want to do. this dirty old bar Trying to work some things out Not getting too far And as I drown out the voices That are keeping me down There's a muse all alone On the other side of town And if I was thinking I'd be thinking thank God Whoever you are, for all the whiskey in this dirty old bar. The times like these are so sad but so true. The thinking's the last thing that you want to do. The thinking's the last thing that you want to do.
As I sit on the bed in this hospital room She's shedding a tear for the bride and groom The tiniest voice starts to bellow and cry It's my finest work yet if today I should die and if I was thinking, I'd be thinking, thank God, whoever you are, for the muse and the miracle right here in my arms. Times like these, so sweet and so true, thinking's the last thing that you want to do. Thinking's the last thing that you want to do. That you want to do Thank you If you get to worry, what you all to do is sing. If you get worry, what you all to do is sing. If you get worry, what you all to do is sing. Sing about your trouble, and it just might pass. If you get lost, what you all to do is sing. If you get lost, what your all to do is sing. If you get lost, what your all to do is sing. Sing about your trouble, it just might pass. Sing about your trouble, it just might pass. But sing about joy, and sing about. If you get broken, what your all to do is sing. If you get broken, what your all to do is sing. If you get broken, what your all to do is sing. Sing about your trouble, it just might pass. Sing about your trouble, it just might.
Thank you so much.
know it's gonna keep on. Just what's happening We could be crashing We could be flying Yeah, we could be flying yeah. So you gotta be lost to be found See the devil spins the world around For you know the sun's up and goes down So you gotta be lost to be found See the devil spins the world around And it is what it is And it isn't what it ain't You know it's gonna keep on Thank y'all so much for the Wood Brothers Sure enjoyed it The Wood Brothers Let's hear it for the Wood Brothers everybody Yeah Mighty fine, y'all. Yes. One more. One more. Shall we have them do another one? Expect that we're gonna try another one here. We'll keep it spunky. Of 
talking about Keith right there. Oh, yeah. The Wood Brothers. Hey, now y'all don't go away because the Wood Brothers are going to be up here and everybody's coming back up and we're going to have the loveless jam here in just a minute. Oh my God. Some good stuff. Thanks guys. Thanks Oliver. Thanks Chris. And Thanks to all the artists tonight on the Blackstone Brewery lineup. Man, it's been a good one. Robbie Folks, we appreciate you coming in from Chicago on the new tour. Poor Old Shine, Shelf Dusters Union, and A.J. Croce, all of them, heading back to the stage. We like to get them singing together. It usually works out pretty good. We usually start together and finish together. That's all we ask. In between, you never know. Next week, y'all, the Blackstone lineup is exciting, too. Really, uh, some... Some of the top acts in Americana music. We've got the Amanda Shires on a, a tour on a very hot new record. Um, guess we're not calling her Amanda Isbell yet, but Amanda Shires is coming. Leftover Salmon returns with the funky, funky music. Uh, we're going to hear some serious country music. A great, great pairing here. Sturgill Simpson's playing the show for the first time. We love Sturgill. And uh, the great Daniel Romano is here, too. And in a return visit from Asheville, uh, one of the most fascinating uh, ensembles you'll hear, Jonathan Scales Forchestra. Jonathan Scales plays the steel pans, and he's a jazz man and a soul man, and he's amazing. So that's happening next week. Get your tickets at musiccityroots.com and uh, ask about it or ask about them at the box office back there. I think we have some uh, a nice leather bag to give away. Oh, from yes, Littleton. we do. Colonel Littleton is here. Show him what you're giving away tonight. I hear AJ's got AJ it. is going to model it for us. The birthday. You know, it's her birthday. It she, is her birthday. She ought to have one of those, too. You know. Yeah. So are you going to draw? do the drawing She's tonight? Do the drawing. How, how much is that thing worth? Not her, the bag. Oh, well, it's, no. it's priceless. Right, she's priceless. $5.50. $5.50. Five seventy-five. I don't know. Something nice. like that. Anyway. Five sixty-seven is what he said earlier. Five fifty. <laughs> now the Colonel Littleton mailbag comes okay, to win. Okay, here All we right. go. Not look. All right, don't look. We're gonna let Bill be read. All he right, because he can read strange names. Uh, drummer, hello, drum, drummer. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. Drum, drum roll. roll, please. Oh yeah, that just adds such drama to it. It just gives it a little bit of class. And I just like it when they roll the drum before there that. There we go. We got oh, it. I ran out of drum roll. I'm sorry. Susan Alexander from Nashville, Tennessee. How Where's about Susan? that, Susan? Where are you? Susan, 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 where are you? Meet us at the booth. Yep, yeah, meet him over at the booth. 
All right. And they'll have you back. Thank AJ, you. thank you. Thank and you, AJ. happy birthday and all that stuff. Well, we want to say a big thanks to all our sponsors, French's Shoes and Boots, of course, the Loveless Cafe, Old Smoky Moonshine, Griffin Technology, Nissan North America, Star 129 Diamond, Vietti Chili, a San Federal Credit Union, and the Nature Conservancy. Let's give them all a big hand. And, of course, our own Colonel Littleton. We'd like to thank all the gang at Sound Image for taking such good care of the live sound here in the barn. You'll find these guys on tour with just about anybody who's anybody, with offices from Los Angeles to Nashville. If you need professional sound, large or small, take a look at sound-image.com. They're a proud sponsor of this final segment. That's when all of our guest artists who uh, Craig just mentioned have gathered back on stage to do the big number at the end. We call it the Loveless Jam. It's sort of like the icing on the cake, the dessert after the big fried chicken meal here at the Loveless Barn. I'm having a Mel Tillis attack, I'm sorry. Is everybody gathered? Is everybody ready but Jim Lauderdale, who seems to be holding things up here? I'm we sorry, are... Keith, but you know, just like a jam needs a cook to kind of make sure all the ingredients are in place before he serves, he or she serves the souffle. And so we're just getting all the ingredients at the right temperature and in the right pots and pans before we serve it up to this fine audience out here. Y'all have been great. Yeah. What a night this has been, huh, folks? I'll tell you what, this has really been something. Um, hey, let's, let's say happy birthday again to Ashley Jean Trott. Again, Ashley Jean, AJ, happy birthday. I take it the souffle is not ready yet. <laughs> Still getting those ingredients together, yes. Keith. Uh, just bear with us for a second here. The souffle is almost they ready to be served. They all look ready but you, Jim. I, I don't know. Hey, Shad. Good to see you, man. Isn't he a great fiddle player, Shad Cobb? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The best. Yes, the key. Yes, that would be it. That that's would be right. Important. The key. Yes. That's C. That's, that's musicians talk for C. I don't know what's oh, going on gosh, here. Gosh, we're almost ready here. John, this help is, me out uh, here. This is exciting, folks. Hey, yeah, I can plug my Roots Radio Hour on Hippie Radio from you, 6 to 7. We'll, we'll be on the air tomorrow night. You may never hear another Jim Lauderdale song on there if he doesn't bail me out pretty quick. But. Hey, I don't think they do already. Oh, they do. I played one last week. Oh, or one week last week. That, Thank you. Oh, gosh. Sometime. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, let's not air our dirty laundry in front of everybody. I always play. Uh, let's, let's get on with the jam, Keith. Can we please? Do you mind if we... We've been, uh, let's, without holding we'll things up anymore, Keith, can we Once again, on the, our host, the who's is ready. always on time, always timely, serves up the dishes just right with the Loveless Jam. It's Jim Lauderdale. Thank you, Keith. Thank you so much. Well, I'll tell you what, the Wood Brothers do a great version of this song. It's called Make Me a Pallet on Your Floor.
is a production of Hang Dye Media. Executive producers John Walker and Todd Mayo would like to thank Morris Lighting for all their hard work to upgrade this season's lighting for TV. Thanks to Rocky, Tom, David, and all the Morris gang. And best wishes to our favorite bartender, Rick Phelps, who's going on medical leave for a while. And also our buddy, Buddy Gerald, who's undergoing some health problems. And of course, a big thanks to all our friends at Hippie Radio. Don't forget to join me for the Roots Radio Hour tomorrow night and every weekday at 7 p.m. except Wednesdays, of course, where we'll explore the roots of Americana and rock for hippies of all ages. Hippie Radio 94.5 on your FM dial. We're glad you joined us this week for Music City Roots. Live from the Loveless Cafe, I'm Keith Bilbrey, and from the edge of Music City, good night. Hang on.